disease is a particular type of cardiomyopathy, which is extremely common in those areas of China where the soil is extremely poor in selenium. Indeed, Kashan's disease is caused by a severe selenium deficiency. Another area of the world where its soil is very low in selenium is Finland. In the 1980s, it was observed that cardiovascular disease death rates in this country were much higher than the rest of Europe. Is there a link between the two observations? Of that we are not sure, but it is not unlikely. Selenium comes both in inorganic and organic forms, associated with the sulfur-containing amino acids cysteine and methionine. Selenocysteine has unique biological functions that cannot be replaced by other forms of selenium. Indeed, a class of proteins synthesized by our body, called selenoproteins, specifically requires selenocysteine as one of the amino acids along their chain. Selenium is one of the antioxidant minerals together with zinc, copper, and manganese. The antioxidant activity of selenium is primarily exerted through its function in selenium-dependent glutathione peroxidase, one of our three major endogenous antioxidant enzymes. Other selenoproteins are also involved in antioxidant defense, such as thyroidoxin reductase, which regenerates the antioxidant thyroidoxin, and selenoprotein P, which chelates heavy metals. Furthermore, selenium by itself can also coordinate metal ions, thus preventing the formation of free radicals. When we eat tuna contaminated with mercury, we have to thank its high selenium content, which complexes mercury and dramatically reduces its toxicity. Another important function of selenium involves thyroid hormone activity, together with iodine. The selenoprotein, iodothyronine deiodinase, is necessary for an efficient activation of the thyroid hormone T3, which requires removal of one atom of iodine. On the other hand, like many other minerals we already have encountered, selenium also has a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde side. The evil side of selenium is that by itself is a pro-oxygen mineral, which generates tissue-damaging radicals, just like iron or copper. This pro-oxidative role of selenium, however, at low levels, may have a biological function in an important mechanism of cancer prevention, which is apoptosis. Apoptosis is the process of self-destruction of a cancer cell. By taking itself out of the picture, a damaged cell undergoing apoptosis prevents cancer from developing and then spreading. Some cancer cells are primed for selenium-induced apoptosis by activated oncogenes. When selenium oxidizes cysteine residues of some proteins, this event initiates the process of apoptosis in cells that are already primed for it, while normally healthy cells are left unharmed. In some studies, selenium supplementation at 200 micrograms per day has been shown to have cancer-preventing activity, and inorganic sodium selenate appears to be more effective than the organic selenium amino acids. But we are still not sure why. Is it because of its antioxidant activity, or is it again a matter of hormesis, meaning is it maybe the pro-oxidant activity of selenium itself that oxidizes cysteine residues and induces apoptosis in those cells that are already primed for it? These are very fascinating questions that hopefully researchers will be able to answer in the coming years. For now, we have to remember that it doesn't take too much selenium to exert toxic effects. The pro-oxidant action of selenium can soon become harmful, cytotoxic, and possibly carcinogenic. Garlicky breath, brittle nails and hairs, and hair loss are among the first symptoms of selenium toxicity. The recommended daily allowance for selenium is 55 micrograms. This is what is required to optimize glutathione peroxidase activity and is also adequate to allow proper thyroid functioning and to prevent Kashan's disease. The RDA for selenium is easily met in our average diets, but do we need more? Many researchers believe that a daily intake of 55 micrograms of selenium may not be optimal to maximize its immunoboosting, cancer-preventive, and cardiovascular protective activity, and they recommend an intake of 200 micrograms instead. The upper level for selenium, however, is set at 400 micrograms. 
so that the range of selenium that is adequate and yet not toxic is pretty narrow. It really is a delicate balance and it is very hard to understand what is not enough and what is too much. Selenium content of foods is extremely variable depending on soils. In general, all animal foods are fair good sources of selenium, with fish and organ meats being the richest. The best plant sources of selenium are whole grains, nuts and seeds. Tuna is an excellent animal source of selenium. Three ounces of it more than cover the RDA. Brazilian nuts are exceptional plant sources of selenium, and one nut alone covers the daily requirement.